Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes to come in and then I'm going to get started. I'm going to start and do this from start to finish. Right this minute, I am just double checking things to make sure that I've got all my little ducks lined up. You know how ducks have to, you know, be in a line. Mine never are in a line, but if they're swimming, I guess I'm always feeling pretty good about it. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Riri. Um, let's see. This is a video on this binding. Okay. Can I pin? Nope. I can't pin it from here. Um, that's okay. Two p.m. here, and I kept wondering where Tanya was until I remembered you. An hour. oh, <laughs> I thought you were in Indiana. Brittany, I, I are you not on Central Time? Hi, Lisa. Pucky pup. Okay, sweetie. Don't worry about it. How's your headache? Do subscribers only? Uh, I think I was just getting ready to do that, but thank you very much, Barbara. Ohio. Okay, that's why. You're in Ohio. Um, I, that was what I forgot to do, Barbara. So thank you very much because I was going to do it and then I forgot. Um, yeah. Thanks for the reminder, though, because I, I would have forgotten it. Okay. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Anel. Okay, I posted the video on the binding, just in case you want to have a reference for later. Um, I'm going to get started, but in just a couple minutes, the, um, okay, I was going to post the, just one second, control C, this is the blog. This is the blog where I got this original tutorial and they, she has the, um, hi Mandy. Um, she has, what do you call it? This thing, this, she has this, a printout or you can get an actual printout. The way the mods can get lost in our mind. Yes, yes, I'm sure, Barbara, that's true. Um, the, what was I going to say? Oh, what I really want to tell you all is that we're getting the beginnings of a really wicked, nasty rainstorm. And Jeff was trying to watch TV earlier and it was going in and out and um, our cables tied to the internet. So if I lose internet, uh, I'll have to figure out maybe next Tuesday to finish, but that's fine, Lisa. Don't worry about it. Um, you can't do it and watch puppy at the same time. Uh, the, so I just want you to know that if it just pops off, I'll be right back. But if I can't come back because the internet goes out, that's what happened. Um, we've been having internet trouble quite a bit lately. The Cox trucks have been up and down the road constantly. So I don't know what's going on with them. Anyways, if you're not aware, what we're going to do today is we're going to bind our postcards into a little book like so. 
Um, the binding I use works real well for anything that is sturdy like this. It's called a single sheet or slip knot binding. Um, I've used it on a bunch of different books. I love this binding because I also love to work on single sheets. So um, that's, that's, it's just a great binding and I use it a lot. So um, I hope I said hello to everybody. If I didn't, I'm really glad you're all here. Um, can anybody think of anybody that was going to be here that's not already? Um, one of the things I'll tell you is that I have one card that you can see that sticks up. It's bigger than the others. Um, I don't really want to cut it off. So I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it. Um, but when I bind it, when I punch my holes in it, I will bind it so it's flat across the bottom. Okay, Barbara, and, and I'll wait just a few minutes. And Of course, I'm pretty sure she could probably get it sorted. Um, I'm going to bind it where... The bottom edge is even across everybody because if you put it on a shelf this way, you know, where it's sitting on the bottom, you want them to be even. You don't want to put this where the other cards are sticking out are, and it's sticking out the bottom like that because then that's the only card that it's leaning on. Um, so it's... It's one of those things where um, if you do have one that's bigger like that, it's also a little shorter. Um, so I will be pushing it all the way to the left to the binding edge. Sorry. Let me get, let me go back out just a little bit. Uh, just so that these stick out on this side, right at, so that it's on the, the, um, hi, Mary. How are you feeling? Hi, Carol. Um, because you want as much, many, your holes in somewhere. Now, one of the things about this, oops, sorry. One of the things about this binding too is that when you open it, it lays flat. So even though we've got thread across part of our, hi, Nashua. Getting better, okay. Um, hi, Gail. Um, even though the thread is there, you can still see your whole postcard or your whole page. So you don't lose a bunch into your spine. That's another reason I like this binding. So let's get started here. Now, oh, there was another thing. I have one card. Okay. anyways i have one card that was I, i'm that one looks like it's upside down but when i turn it over and look at the thing i it's right side up so i was just checking it out um one of my cards is um vertical Um, I'm hunting, sorry. This one. This card is vertical. Um, 
so I'm going to put it in where if I turned the book, it would look good this way. Um, Great, Barbara, thank you. So that's that's something you need to think about when you're punching your holes. And that's why I wanted to go over that part first. Um, because that's that's where that's where you can get into trouble is if you get your holes punched in the wrong place. So um, it's it's always wise to put your cards the direction you want them to be once they're once you get the holes in them in other words whichever way the page goes okay we're back to where they're fine now i take a little scrap um i need it to be a little it doesn't have to be the whole size of this but you need a little bit of width to it because when we mark it for the holes we need to have enough room to hold on to that's all um it needs to be the same size as your page and these happen to be you know four by six so it needs to be four inches across here and i'm just going to be really lazy and use my scissors to cut it and this is just going to be our guide for our um our holes for punching our holes because that's going to take a little while excuse me so now i have this piece that's the same width or height height is what it really is height as my pages okay and I'm going to put my holes, my mark my holes on a page this size or a page even just a little bit bigger, probably even if it was smaller. I still want three holes. There's a reason for this, especially when these start getting big like this one is. This shifts. Can you see how it will move? Okay. If there was only two holes, holes like top and bottom it would be much worse and we don't want that because that wears on the holes in our spine so what we want is to get some stability and three holes even though it's just four inches gives us a little bit of stability a lot, just a little bit. and oh another thing and the holes are about a half an inch in from the edge. And <clears throat> ask me how I know this. No matter how thick your page is, a half an inch, you can pull that thread right through. Boop. So be careful when you start put when we start doing our stitching, because even though that's a half an inch in, it can pull. Yeah, I don't I don't want to go so far as to put in five holes. Three is plenty in four inches. Um, in my um, in my just a minute, I'll get it. This is my same six Wednesday journal from the first three rounds. And see, it's got five holes and it still will shift some. See, it, it'll it shift, but it doesn't get sloppy. And that's what I'm trying to stay away from. So, you know, something this big, you definitely want to get a few more holes in it. Five, is, five works real well. Um, hi, Sharon. Another thing about, now the postcards are not going to get real thick. Um, obviously, I've got lots of room in my postcard book because that's my 
spine and it didn't gator mouth or anything like that. But if you, just for future reference, if you're going to use this binding and you got pages that are getting thick, um, I added uh, a spacer to the back of all of these pages. Can you see them? See, each page behind it has a spacer because otherwise um, it pinches and all of this thickness, it really gator mouths it and it, it doesn't lay as nice. So the postcards, you don't need to do that with. But if you're using this binding on something that does have more, um, I mean, there's a lot of layer to this and therefore you want some spacers. Um, I just, each page has a little, this is like a real thin, okay, just a minute, I'll think of what it's called, corrugated cardboard. It's not thick corrugated cardboard, it actually comes from some cereal boxes, so it's a real thin uh, corrugated cardboard. And this book, because it has three rounds of what we did, I bound it from front to back so that I could leave it open. If you wanted to do that, you could. Today, I'm going to bind my book from back to front. Um, but if you if you want to leave it where you can add to it and want to get your cover on, you can just go ahead and do that and bind it from front to back. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, just a minute. I'm going to bring you in a little closer. Okay. Um, okay, so I have this little scrap. It's the same height as my pages. And as I said, this one's tall. So I, when I put this on here, I will put it at the bottom like that. Um, the next thing I need to do is to get my holes marked. And I always use this thing. Um, this is the centering ruler. This one happens to be from Fiskars. Um, it was way cheaper than the Tim Holtz one. Um, and I use it all the time for all kinds of things. It's a lot like a quilting ruler in the fact that it's got, it's really hard to see them on camera, but there are quarter inch lines. See, there's quarter inch lines. There's the one inch line. There's eighth inch lines in places. You have to find them. There's not eighth inch lines aren't everywhere. Um, it's marked in 16th down the center and on both edges. Um, but uh, I use it a, a lot, a lot. It's also a regular ruler on one side. It goes from one up. So. I am going to put my holes a half an inch in from the edge of my spine. So one half inch. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying it down. This is a four inch piece of paper. So I'm going to put my center hole right at zero. And my other two holes, this one's going to go um, at one and a half and one and a half. So Basically, it's a half an inch from the top, the bottom, and from the spine. So this is the spine. Okay. Now I'm just going to take my good old punch. And you could use something else to punch this. I happen to like this thing. It makes a nice, um, right, right about eighth inch holes. If you want a tinier hole... You can go with a 16th inch punch and punch it by hand. But, you know, it's it's six and one half dozen of another how you do it. It's You need holes. You need to have them in there. It's too hard to do it and do one thing at a time. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to line this up. Now, I don't want to turn my postcards over because I have everybody's addresses on them. So, we're going to have to uh, do a little fiddling with um, 
black and white markers. For you guys, you might want to flip it over. Oh, good. That didn't show up at all. Maybe it didn't write. No, it's just... If you do this on the back, you'll probably find that it's easier to see your holes. Okay. So now I know where my holes need to be. And I'm just going to go through here and uh, mark where my holes have to be. This one I'm going to have to do off camera because... Uh, well, I can do it actually kind of on camera. So see if I turn it over, my holes will be easier to see. And the reason I'm having to do that is because um, I can't get my guide on the front. Hi, Joyce, because of the um, thickness of this. So um, that one I'll have to just flip over to. Usually a black or a white pen will um, do most everything, but, and I just, I just go through and I'm going to mark all my holes. Um, for those of you who came in later, we're uh, we're having some issues with our internet, um, and we're getting a storm, so it could possibly go out. I hope it doesn't. And um, so, give me a few minutes to come back if it does, and then if it doesn't, we'll have to talk about when to finish up. I just am hoping it just holds. So see, this is, this is, um, this is, it's just one of those things. Now you, I could, I could just go through and, um, right. see here, this one I can't hardly see. So what I'll do is I'll put this back and I'll write with my white one. Who all is going to bind their book? I know Barbara's binding hers. Lisa said she was going to bind hers later. I love the feel of this canvas paper. This is really... Barbara's punching holes. Barbara got done quicker. Now, like I said, if you bind this from the front to the back, you can add more to it later. Um, And you probably won't even notice it once you get the book bound together, Barbara. You know, it's one of those things. I'm going to punch a bunch of these holes right now. Oh, see, that one is almost impossible to see. This white pen is not a good white pen. Where's my other white pen? Um, uh, 
oh, maybe it's just what is on here that's not wanting to let it. Ah, but there's good enough. Okay, where is my back? Come here. That's the front. The other thing about using your crocodile to do this is it punches through just about anything. So um, you've got some pretty sturdy um, stuff in some of these postcards and the crocodile will um, punch right through it. Now when I go to punch with this thing, I'm watching this piece. I don't... I. I I know there's measurements and stuff on it, and I could skip the um, marking, but I find it easier to do it that way. I didn't pay attention to how these all came in so I'm just putting them in the book as they are just I'm not going to worry about which ones came to me first or any or how they're dated now when I put them together for my travel books they're put together in order by date um, and my same six Wednesday book is put together in order by month so you know it just it all depends on what you're doing and this one, I'm not going to worry about which came first. Joyce, did I say hello? I hope so. Sharon, I hope I said hello. Okay, when whoever is working along with me gets to the point where they're ready to start binding, say, ready or whatever, and I'll do the next step. Until then, I'm just going to keep punching my holes. Sharon, are you going to bind your book today? Okay, now this one is the one that I had to do on the back side. So we're just going to bring it over here.
Okay, that's fine. That's cool. Um, Okay, those are ready, but I've still got more to punch holes in. Hi, Pam. Um, okay, this one goes here. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope it's getting better. We're supposed to say craft. Well, we understand. I, I think, Pam, that's how I read it was crafty ladies. But, um, okay, see... Sometimes you just cannot see what. You know, Jeff, um, Jeff was sick in June and he's still having, um, issues with, uh, stamina. I remember the last time I got the flu, which has been years and years and years ago. Um, it took me months to get over it. Okay, Lisa, dear. Now, this is the one I told you is tall. See, it's, it's, ta it's taller and it's a little shorter. And so, I am putting my guide in the bottom corner here so that when I bind it, it sits flat on the bottom of the book and it'll stick up the top of the book, but it won't. But it won't it, it won't hinder how the book sits on a shelf. These are just not wanting to show up. Hmm. When all else fails, break out the big pen. From Kathy, I was gonna say, who is that one from? I can't remember. Can't remember. Can't remember.
these are so pretty they're all so different it's it just amazes me how different they are and yet they're all so pretty I really want to try something like this. It's similar to my doodles, but not the same. Kind of different from my doodles, too. Um, Jeff's in there being quiet. I think his headache has finally eased up. He had one of those silly migraine thingies again today. His medicine's due tomorrow, so he's having to fight with it. Yeah, isn't it pretty fun, Barbara? Mm-hmm. I like all of my cards. I think they're all gorgeous. Now, once you get the holes poked and everything, you have to decide how many pages you have. And one of the things I will remind you of is to count your front and back cover because um, I forgot when I bound my last postcard book and did not count my front and back cover and was just that much short of, paper, of thread. So it was not a pleasant experience because of it. I had to add thread in when I wouldn't have had to had I just counted everything. Now, if you're not going to finish your binding, if you're going to leave it open to the back where you can add things to it, or the front, whichever one you want, um, then you'll just count the number of pages you have and then add some extra for how many you think you're going to add to it later. Um, okay, I'm missing a hole. Where is it? There it is. It blended in with the lines that are on the... the it had a little black circle and it looked like it was part of the design. I think this one was from Mindy. Yeah, it was. Those are really cool images. Let's see here. We're about to get them all done. Now, on my postcard books that I use for my travel journal things, I usually have charms and things I want to add to it. And because I collect those, the flattened pennies, and I have all those other things that I gather. That's really hard to touch. Um, so I'm going to, you know, it's going to have dangles and things on it. On my Same Six Wednesday book, I did not want any dangles and things. And so you have, that might be another consideration, whether you bind your book forward or backwards, um, because 
you can add the dangles or you can leave the dangles off. It doesn't really matter, but I'll show you what I did on my Same Six Wednesday book where it hides the tails and not have dangles. Okay. Finally, we got all our holes punched. Um, on this book, I didn't want the dangles. So let's just back up a little bit. Come here. Okay. You see, on here, I wanted all. I wanted to be able to put all of these things. Okay. Well, but this one I didn't want that for. So what, and I was also binding it where I wanted to add pages. So on the very last page, there are some little strings, but they're hidden on the inside. So you could go from back to front and hide those strings on the inside the same way as I did this one. Um, and just, so it's, it's a six one, six Six of one, half dozen of another. Okay. Okay, so now we need to know exactly how many pages we have. One. Twenty-three. Okay, hon. Go right ahead. All right. So there's I have 23 total pages counting my front and back. This is how you get an idea of how much thread you want. Because I have 23 pages. Um and because my holes are a half an inch in from the edge. See, there. this is the edge. This is a half an inch in. So each page, for each page, I need an inch of thread. Right? But the thread is doubled. So for each time I count, so if I've got 23 pages, I need 23 inches twice doubled so 23 twice is 46 and i don't like running out of thread so um 46 an extra four inches that's not enough um i'm going to make my um threads 56 inches long yeah that sounds good i'd rather have too much than not enough so Again, I've got 23 pages. They're a half an inch in, in from the edge. So each page needs an inch doubled. So 23 and 23 is 46. And then I'm going to add an extra 10 inches. So 56, you know, roughly. I'll probably just pull thread off. But I also need that three times because I have three holes. Okay. You've got 15 and extra 10 inches each thread. Okay, if you've got 15 pages, Barbara, you need 30 plus your extra 10 inches. Okay. Is that so so if you have 30 pages, you need if you have 15 pages, you need 30 inches plus that extra 10 or so. Right? 
Um, where'd my thread go? It's right here. And I think I'm going to use that if there's enough. I think there should be. Yep. Okay. All right. So, and here's the deal. <laughs> okay. I, my table is actually sitting, this, this big piece sits on top of four small tables. They're two foot by four foot. So I have four foot or 48 inches that I can just pull my thread out and measure. Okay, and 48 plus an extra 10 would be 58. So that's probably how I'll measure um, is to just run it across the table and then add some because that's, that's 48. And then I'll just grab out another 10, like, you know, 10, 12, like that. Um, So then I need three paces like that. Now you can add if you if you boo boo and you get your thread too short, you can add. Um, you just end up with a few little tails inside your book. Okay, so now I have three pieces of cord. Now these cords are, this is wax linen, and whatever cord you use, I highly recommend you wax it because it makes it so much easier. Okay. And I am going to start at the back. And what I do is, let's get rid of these things. They're my way. I take all three of my cords and I fold them in half. Bye-bye, Pam. Okay, so now I have this half piece right here. Folded, it's looped. Okay. I take this one and I put it through the hole, this folded piece. And there's the loop. And I take my two ends and I put them through the loop. Okay. And then I pull this up. Now, don't pull too hard. You want to pull it, but you don't want to pull it too hard. Snug. And then, here's the deal. This one, <coughs> excuse me, goes on the right side of my legs. <coughs> do the same thing fold it in half and I can guarantee the ends won't be even by the time you get done just the way it works I think I've got it as close as I can get it for you but I'll double check that here in a second now that one I put between my legs. It just keeps these long cords and it's, it, this this 40 56 inches is nothing. Uh, this was like 90 inches of thread. So you you get hi Brenda. Um you get a lot of thread and it's kind of in the way so you're kind of having to deal with it and if you have it always putting it back in the same place 
it seems to work better. And always remember to snug your threads, but don't pull them hard. It's just. So now I have tickly threads that are hanging over my legs. Okay. Um, let me find my camera, see if I can get it any closer. No, it's, it's close as I can get it guys so here is where the next um, part is it always I always have trouble with the next part um, because I have to look it up I can never remember whether the next time I go between or on the outside it probably wouldn't matter but I always go I always refer back to my little sheet and it always tells me that I have to go between my threads. Okay. And yeah, I should know that because I went in between on the first loop. But so when you take this one, you put it through the hole. Okay. Now this is my back cover. That's why it's upside down. From now on, my pages are going to be right side up. I put it down through the hole and then I open these threads up and I put that those two ends between the others and there again I just put that thread to the right hand side of my leg now I'm going to do this one and you notice I didn't pull this tight it's easier to do this if you do not pull them tight until you get all three or five, especially if you got five threads. So I'm opening this up, putting my tails between it and sliding it down and just push it back down between your legs. Dang, this doesn't feel like very much thread. I just wonder if I messed up. It's just that probably because it's such a small book. I just, now we're going to take these and we're going to snug. And we don't want to pull hard. We just want to snug. And I always separate them a little bit when I snug them and, you know, just do one like that. Because if you try to do them both at the same time, they're waxed and you might not get them pulled down quite as nicely as you want. Try to keep your pages lined up. And see now this one opens. Ta-da! Okay, let's get the front cover out of the way. And you just have to keep remembering to open, but put these down between your two threads. And you just keep going like that until you got them all on there. Hi, Julie. Have to get ready for work soon, hon. The other thing is the more pages you get on there, the easier it is to keep them lined up. They just, I don't know, it's just. Remember, go snug, but don't pull too hard. Oh, 
okay, that was the weirdest little motorbike I've ever seen. Has a big front wheel and a tiny little itty bitty back wheel. Okay. Having a banana. Okay. Other thing that's kind of odd this time is this thread is very thick. I don't usually use this is just some wax linen I've had for a long time and it's way heavier than what I usually use so kind of odd feels kind of odd you know okay And like I said, be careful when you pull because it doesn't take much to pull that right through your card. Threading the tiny holes. What did you use to punch your holes with, Barbara? Um, have you got three large eyed needles where you could put both strands of your cord through one needle and um, just keep a needle on the ends of each piece by any chance? Because uh, that might, it might make it easier to get the threads through the holes was what I was thinking. Yeah, if you put both, if you put both threads through the needle, because you could still separate them, just put the needle on the end of the threads. I'll bet you it was a sixteenth inch instead of an eighth, an eighth inch. If you're having that much trouble getting those threads through, but a needle will really make a difference. Now, um, you, it might be hard to get the needle threaded at first, but once it's on there, you should be good. The other thing you could do is if you've got one of those wire needle threaders, you could uh, use it to actually pull the threads through each hole. To me, it would be easier to put a needle on my thread, but... I would think, anyways. I think. But then I, you know, you never know.
Now, <clears throat> in the description box down below is the link to the video where I actually did a video on this. Um, it's there, so it's always up and always there and easy to find. Um, plus, there's a link to the blog where I first found this technique. And she's the one that's got the um, printout. Um, the other thing is, is you notice that I'm right here and my stuff is there and I've got my, I'm going this way. Yeah, probably. It's not. It's not hard to miss out on water, Julie. That's for sure. It's. I just find it easier to do this this way. Rather than trying to leave it like a book or something like that. It just... just seems to lay better and I can just draw through things better even if I have five cords going at the same time okay Julie have a good day and I hope you don't get a worse headache I didn't think to get out any beads or anything. See, once you start getting like a ledge where your fingers go can hold the pages in place, it, it works real well. Um, you, there, it's very easy to keep them lined up. Hello, Bradley. Um, this is called a slip knot or single sheet binding. And we're binding our postcard um, swap that we did. So all of this art is from members of the YouTube community. Most of whom are here, or many of whom I should say are here in chat today some of whom are binding their own books. If I cut my threads too short, you guys are going to laugh at me, aren't you? After telling you what I have to do, making sure I got double. I do like this heavy cord though because it's showing the binding is showing up a lot. 
um, it's it's really the edge. See how lurking and following along, yay! See how the um, the stitches are actually showing up. That's what I'm hoping for, Riri, is that everybody's lurking and working. Now, this is the one that is a little taller than everybody else. So, see when I poke the holes at the bottom, now it's going to line up like that. So... Come on now. Hmm. The little piece of cardboard did not come out of the hole, apparently, when I punched it. <laughs> oh, dear, Barbara. Well, at least it's not a 90-page book, okay? <laughs> when I do my postcard books and we were, we've been, you know, traveling and, and gone for three months, then I end up with a lot of postcards to bind into my book. Just laugh with you? Okay, there you go. You're not going to laugh. Thank you, Anil. I appreciate that. I think that with all, everybody's beautiful. The artwork was just amazing. Every time I got one of these cards in the mail, it was so much fun because the, the artwork was just so different for all of them. Well, here's the deal, Mindy. I cut them too short on purpose. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Uh, uh. I cut them too short on purpose so that I could show you all how to add um, add thread, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not. Now, when I did my same six book and I left it, I just, I had no idea how many um, sessions of Same Six Wednesday we were going to do. Uh, I just put yards of, um, you know, because I only had seven pages to, to put in at one time. So I just put a couple of yards of cord on and I did have extras left over which is no big deal i always just save those pieces for something else um because i didn't know how if you know if i would have put session four into that book but the book got you know when it got to be oh, almost three inches two and a half three inches I just didn't want to add any more pages to it. I felt like that if I added more pages to it, it would just get to be too much. So uh, I chose to stop after the third session. So I guess we got to do, uh, it was fun to do. It kind of got me back into arting a little. I mean, craft show coming up and started a planner. 
Well, that's good, Brittany. That's fun. Um, you know, I'm all over the place with what I do. So it's really hard because I had never been able to direct my art in one direction. But I would say I do more collage than anything else. So that is one way to look at it. But I think it's all about whether or not you're having fun with it. Somehow totally lost the rhythm of this. Please do one really slow. Okay. All right. This is the next page. I need to do one really slow. I have to put the two threads in the hole. Now you're using a needle, so put your needle in the hole. Then split the threads apart right here and pull these two threads through it. Okay. Next two threads in the hole. Split the two threads apart and put the tails through it. Same goes here in the hole, split apart, tails go through. And then come back and gently um, pull them down. And when you pull them down, kind of hold your page so that it's square and pull first one side and then the other, but don't pull too hard. The reason you pull them separately is because they don't always line up exactly the same when you put them in there. So you want to snug them up. And then you grab your next. Now, now they're starting to, mine are starting to separate because they're thicker thread. But a lot of times they're really stuck together. And it wasn't even half finished. Ah. Um. Yeah, Brittany, that would probably work. Okay, so we're going to do another one, Barbara. Really slow. I'm going to put that one on there. Two tails for your needle, because you've got a needle, through the hole. Split these apart right here by the, right here. Split them apart. Put those two threads through there and snug it down. Um, I, and if I'm working in a comp book, I always take out... Um, pages, Brittany, through the hole and then split them apart. Through the hole and split them apart. You got it, Barbara? Uh oh, hi, Andrea. You're back on track. Okay. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, she was, she lost, she, she was having trouble. She used tiny holes and she was having trouble getting the thread through. So she took the time to put, um, needles on her cord. And when she did, she lost where she was, you know, when you get out of it, you, you have to get back into it. Um, Brittany. Even those tiny glue books that I've been doing, let me show you just a second. I think they're right where I can grab them. Okay. Um, I think they are. There they are. Okay. These have 50 sheets in them. That's 50 sheets. I took 10 sheets out of each one of these books, and they're still growing fat, and they're not halfway done. So they'll be fine. I'm pretty sure they'll be fine as glue books. But um, I took a lot of pages out of the middle of them. When, before I ever even started, I took pages right out of the center. So, um, 
because I knew they were going to grow. And see, they've grown quite a bit. They'll be fine. They won't they won't be too gator mouth, but and heck this one. I heard I put in how many pages did I even put in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Okay, I put 15 sheets in there. So 15 sheets of paper. And look what it's done. Now, I, I love it. I love how it, it feels and everything. But that's only 15 sheets of paper. Yes, you should. You sh could probably take some out and do some something with them. Yep. Especially when you're going to add surface, add, basically, glue booking is adding texture to the page. You're adding um, height to the page. You're going to fill up your page fast. It's working! Yay! It's an Anel. Oh, hi, Anel. Take everyone. Oh, several empty binders. Um, I have a closet full of empty binders. Um, Je they used to throw them out at Jeff's work. And, of course, here recently, they didn't have what I wanted. Uh, I, I didn't have what I wanted. Had to go buy one. Of course, I went to the thrift store. But um, I wanted something very, very specific. So, you know, of course, I didn't have one. But I've used three or four out of my stash in the closet recently. We gave away a lot of them when we... Um, we took them to the school when we moved from South Dakota because we didn't want all of that, you know. I mean, I have a bunch. I didn't need more than that. Okay. Yep, Glue Book Creative Journal, yes. And if you're going to glue book in it, um, Brittany, you could uh, fold them in half and um, sew them and make a, a smaller book, too. I was amazed at how strong the paper in some composition books is. I was very amazed. When I painted, and I don't know where that's at, but I painted all the pages in a composition book. I was really surprised how they came out. Be careful. Don't pull too hard. Just have to keep reminding myself of that. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to yank your cord. Um, another thing you want to be careful of is not shoving your book, shoving the top off of it. See, see, you want to keep 
your spine straightened up like this um, because I just did it just now accidentally I started shoving and it went like that you don't want to do that because then it will be looser and it'll wiggle around more than you want so just uh, make sure when you're holding it you don't kind of shove it off kilter there like that I think the first time we used this binding Lisa and I were doing um, um, the crunchy books the ones that make such a wonderful noise uh, what did we call those Lisa we, we they were something crunchy something crunchy some they made the crispy crunchy or something they they made the most wonderful noise when you oh she just said be right back when i ask her for a question but if you've got binders and the other thing is Brittany, if you use pages that are loose you can you can do different things on the pages and um Uh, what do I want to say? You can do different things on the pages and it will. You can then put them in the binder. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Partially because y'all are going to be laughing at me here in a minute. I am going to come up like four inches short. So Barbara, I hope you don't come up four inches short. Give yourself an extra pile of bread. <laughs> I don't know unless this thread is just a little denser than I expected. I I don't usually come up that short. Usually come up pretty good. And of course it gets easier as you get towards the ends of your thread because you're not trying to pull it through. But another thing is if your fingers start to get too waxy and you just can't stand that anymore, you have to go wash. Because it's kind of warm in here and and I got to have a drink. Mm, got to have a drink. But rat waxed cord will come off on your fingers, especially if it's warm. okay guys don't forget that thursday when we're on lisa's channel we'll be on lisa's channel thursday when lisa gets back we'll have her post her channel in there um but we're going to be on at 1 30. so um don't forget that we're changing the time thursday um we're going to try 1 30 for now see if if it will work better for lisa and um hopefully that's going to work out but i just wanted you guys to know that we'll be on about half an hour earlier than normal on thursday That's 
Becky's. Only five more cards. Yay! I'm glad you got plenty of thread. I'm I'm pushing really close to not having enough. I will have enough, but it's it's gonna I'm I'm gonna have to argue with it to get it um, tied, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. I can do it. Um, I will tell you that if you've got a thicker thread, you might want to uh, add a little more thread in. Um, I think that's maybe what. Uh, because I usually have a little bit more than this left, but it's okay. I'm good. It's 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 going to be fiddly to tie my last knots when I shouldn't have had such a fiddly spot so it's okay though I'll get it Now I put my cover on and I did exactly the same thing. Okay. Usually I've got six or seven inches of thread left, not, not an inch. Yeah, just enough, Lisa. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, they're tiny ends. I'm, I'm going to be fighting with them. I'll show you how to do it in just a second. Um, Lisa, would you do me a favor and put in your channel link? Um I'll be right back, guys. I want to check something. I... There we go. All right. Okay. At least you can see that they're there, so... Okay, that's Lisa's channel if you're not familiar. And we will be there at 1.30 on Thursday working on our themed journal. Okay. I'm going to say this and I'm going to make y'all stop for just a minute. Barbara, um, 
Riri, whoever's working along, can you stop with what you're doing and watch this really quick for so that I can show you um, how you finish this out? Um, and then while I go um, fetch some beads, you can be finishing yours up. I'm going to give you all just a minute to get whatever page you're working on. Stopping to watch. Okay, Barbara's stopping to watch. Okay. Now, with these next pieces, they can get irritable and you're going to be opening your book like this and closing your book so you need to keep these things a little snug because if you don't your front cover gets loosey on there and we don't want that okay so what i am going to do and i'm going to do it with this long one first so you can watch is i'm going to take it okay let's see here you see those are the two, and these are coming out from the middle, right? So I'm going to split them like so. I'm going to take this one around the corner right there and back all the way around this and stick it back outside. Okay? And then I'm going to take the other one and go the other way. I'm going to stick it in here and go around to the outside. So now I have both of them. They wrapped around that on the inside and I have them sticking out here and I'm going to tie them. And I usually tie them a couple of times. Okay. So now I'm going to do it again in the middle. I have them and I split them. Now, because we're in the middle and I can't wrap it around, I sometimes do them both at the same time. I take this one and I stick it in between the two pages. See, it comes up in here. And I stick this one up on the other side. And then I stick them back out to the outside. What it does is it wraps it all the way around that last um, loop. And they're short and they're fiddly. So okay, got it. All right, got it. All right. So I'm gonna tie this one. And I'm just going to double tie the knot. Okay, now this one's going to be really hard to watch because uh, it's so short. But it's, let's do the exact same thing. I just stick it around. There's this one. Now, if I was hiding them, if I was hiding the knots, I would do that and then I'd stick them back inside. I'd just stick them back inside in there and um, tie it one more time just to hide them. Boy, did I get that's just like, hmm. I couldn't, have, I couldn't have gotten any closer with that now, could I? But since those are too short to put any beads on, I'm not going to put beads on those two. I'm going to just put some beads up here. And I'm going to go get some beads and I'll be right back. Hmm. 
Hmm. I could use the lighter weight stuff to put the beads on. That might be a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might be a good idea. I can't tell if this is the right color. Okay. All right. Now then, since um, I'm going to have to add something to um, put the beads on because this is so short anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and take these two off and add a lighter weight uh, cord just because it makes it easier to put the beads on. Um, well, then I could put beads on all three spots too. That might be, might like that better. So I have some creamy colored cord, which is will match. That's good enough. And it will just make life a lot easier if I use the lighter weight cord. So I'm just going to cut some strings that are, you know, about 12, 15 inches long. Yep, it wastes cord, but that's okay. It, it's really hard to do this if you don't have some thread. So, okay, put that right there. Then all I do really is um, I open the book. I put one end around each side. And that's how I add multiple pieces up here. Or even this. This has got one added to it, too, because there was only two ends there. So, I actually think I'm going to put them all. Yeah, I'm going to put one at each one. We'll see. So, I'm going to just put it around from the inside to the outside. Like so. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. Okay, so now that one's ready to add beads to. And then now there's two tails. And I just put it around and I just pull it through. And I can add beads to this one. Let's get that. It went right. It pulled the knot funny is what it did. There we go. Now you could add as many or as few... Like I said, if you didn't want to add anything and you wanted it to look like this, you just bring your thingies 
back to the inside and tie them off. But I need, oh, something to put some beads out on. And we're going to need a needle or a pin or some such thing to make our life easier. Um, I'll just use this big one. makes it easier for you guys to see. Cut out some of these color. And I'm just using black and white beads because of all the black and white on my cover. And this is two different sizes of seed beads. The black ones are eight and the white ones are, I have to have different glasses, are I think 11s, but they, these may be um, delicates. No, these are just uh, 11s. And I'm just going to put and you don't have to use two sizes. I just do because it looks kind of cool and because the little white one that I'm going to put on here that means that it is um, it's tinier and it will make it easier for the knots to stay. Okay. Uh, a hungry puppy. Uh oh, I can't, I can't read that. Let me see. A hungry puppy is demand is a demanding puppy. It is taking a lot of self control today to get his food and a lot of patience from me. <laughs> oh dear. Uh oh. Well, that means he's feeling better. That's for sure. I don't know if y'all know that the puppy was very sick last week and so and then he didn't want to eat uh, but now he's back to eating so that's a good sign okay so once we get our little seed bead on there i'm going to take this and here's my trick if you haven't watched me do this before when you want a knot to be someplace specific you take a pin or a needle and you put it through the little loop that you made for your knot, put your pin right where you want your knot to be and pull because it will slide down the pin and your knot will be right where you want it. And I always put two knots in. Is that Yeah, that's interesting. That seed bead has got a bigger hole than normal. We will have to put in a third knot. There we go. All right, that's good. And then we can just snip that off. We're going to have good timing today because I have to take Jeffrey to get his car. It's been at the shop all day. And I couldn't, we couldn't get it beforehand because they weren't done with it. He was the second person there this morning and um, the, the guy, the, oh, there's only one guy that works on Jeff's because of all the raised up stuff that's going on with it. And of course, 
just the second one there but his mechanic is the has already got the other person in front of jeff is needs that mechanic too so it's like oh well okay I don't know. We may have to put another. It just doesn't look like enough. I think it's going to have to have another one. That's all right. I can do that. Got lots of beads. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, wait, wait. What, what does she say? I did it. Woo! Best advice was to put the threads on the big eye needles. Worst choice selection was using black thread. Couldn't see it. Ah! There you go. Yes. Um. Um, next, the next advice would be to use a slightly bigger hole, <laughs> but you know, at least the needle worked, Barbara, that's what matters. Now, if you're putting charms on here, you want to put your charms at the top hole because you want them to dangle some. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, you don't want them to build up the knot where you can't open your book. So you want them to dangle some. And when you put it on the shelf, they need to have you know room to hang down. So that's something to consider if you're putting charms and stuff on. Yeah, if it's really waxy, and, and especially if it's warm, it, it will, if you wax your own thread, it, it's, it's sticky. And that thick thread was very sticky today, too. And it's also, it's been... You know, the air conditioner is coming on, but it's it was warm. But I'm not liking just two threat two beads there. I'm going to have to add um, another strand of beads for. It just, you know, doesn't make me happy. So, which is not a problem. Just don't try to use two shorter threads for your beads. That will make you really grumpy. Almost as grumpy as running out of thread to tie your book together with. Maybe next time I should say use three times the amount you need instead of twice plus extra. But One more, and then we'll add some more, because, yeah, it just doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
just so you all know, I had to switch glasses to put these beads on. So yeah, it's really hard to see chat. So make sure you capitalize it if you want me to see it. So I can switch my glasses back. pieces out okay those were a little long I didn't need them quite that long Go through there. And you can just add as many of these as you want. If I will tell you that if you get too many, let me just show you on my other book. On this book, I think it was. No, it must have been the other one. Um, on my uh, my latest book, this is last year's book, but on my latest book, I I got so many charms on the front right here that I went down two or three pages and put my next batch of charms right there so that they weren't all on that same um, thread because you don't want to put that much strain on one thread so or one hinge, whatever you want to call this little spot that you're working with. So if you're at, because I had a lot of charms this year um, for this year's book. So I ended up having to add further down. Made me it made me feel more comfortable about tying them in there. I have also somewhere along the line, I don't remember which one it was, but I used a little medallion thing and I brought my threads back up through the hole right there and put this little medallion and a bead inside of that, which was really cute too. Um, I cannot even remember what book I did that for. It may have been a scrappy crunchy book. Lisa, are you? If Lisa's back, she might be able to tell us what we called that book. It was a, it was a crunchy scratch. I can't remember. I just remember that um, it made such a great noise. My fingers are getting sticky. Yeah, see, this is going to be just. Yeah, it just needed a little bit more um, beads. It just did. It was either no beads or a few more.
Now I have usually in the past have used a quilting pin to do my needle tying with because I, this I did a lot of this kind of work with my some jewelry that I did. It used to make these big statement pieces and there was a lot of this little tiny knot tying and I used a fancy quilting pin and I would bend them. They would get bent to the point where I'd have to pitch them out. Yeah, that looks way better. Hi, Dawn. Okay, we called it. She, she, we called it a scrappy book at first. Then the name morphed into crunchy book. Yeah, it was a scrappy crunchy book. I remember. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of morphed because it was it made such a fun crunchy noise and we made a couple of them um the the first one we made early on when we started streaming together and the next year we had liked that project so much that the next year i think we made another one And it was a collage project, so it was it worked real well. And it was it used up a lot of scrap and and fun images and I did say hello, didn't I, Dawn? I hope so. Hi, Dawn. Um Yeah, I it just needed a just a little more beads. And this is this is a fiddly part too because it takes a while. I need more black beads. And the more sticky your fingers get, the worse that putting the beads on does. Okay. I uh, I thought I did, but, you know, couldn't tell you for sure. I'm almost done, and then I'll do a little flip through before I go. Should have plenty of time to get Jeff where he needs to be. It's just up the road. Um, for some reason, these little white beads uh, have a bigger hole than normal. Don't ask me why, but they do. So I'm having to put three knots in, making sure one of the knots goes over top of the other one, just to be sh safe. Can't believe I used to do this all without any glasses on. All right. Almost there. One more set of beads. It's a good thing my fingers are all sticky. Uh, 
Okay, Lisa, hun. That puppy is is uh, not behaving today. He's he's he's. I'm hungry. He's demanding. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's time of the day where she usually has to take him out too. He's awake right now. Uh, Thursday will be on Lisa's channel again uh, to work on our themed journal, the cookbook themed journal. But we will be coming on at 1.30, not 2 o'clock. Um, we're trying to work better around Lisa's schedule and the puppy's schedule. So, um, Okay. Let me put those over there, that in there. And let's put, okay. let's just move those out of the way. I'll get some good glasses. All right. Now, this is not wanting to lay flat. I don't know exactly why, but it won't matter. Um, I'll just turn it like that and it will flatten itself out. It's just one of those things. And you notice how um, this one is nice and it doesn't gator mouth or anything. Like I said, when I did this one, I gave each of my pages a shim. On the back side, this is about an eighth of an inch thick. It's a thin piece of corrugated cardboard. Because I had all of this buildup on these pages, I knew that if I didn't, it was going to gator mouth so bad that I would not like the way it went on the shelf. So by putting a shim in along the spine, it uh, gave it a better look. So... Okay, so let's do a flip. I'm putting it over here so that the uh, when I open it, the I like how these came out. I don't want to show everybody's addresses, okay, since these are postcards. So that's why it's over there. Let's see if I can open it completely. And, of course, I did the covers. But this one is Mary's. Isn't that a fun image? And of course, it has gold around the edges. It's it's not bright bright gold, but it's on gold. And this one's Becky's Aunt Beck's creations. I love this. It says, "A one friend can change your whole life." This one is, I'm going to have to look. I can't remember. It is, um, Dory Bishops. This one is Dory Bishops. Uh, what, just a minute. Let me find something to sit over the top of that. And it goes like that. I think that one is share. <coughs> Excuse me, just a minute. Yes, this one's Cheryl's. Little Sister Crafting. This is Cheryl's. Um, but you see this little camper bus? The little camper bus has a paintbrush on top of it. I don't know where she got that image, but it is a really cool image. I need a paintbrush on top of my camper. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, this one is uh, Jenny D Jennifer Dalton's. Isn't that cool? There's a lot of texture on this one too. It doesn't, the texture doesn't show up, but it's there. It doesn't, it, you know, it looks flat on the screen. Okay, let's see here. 
This one's Lisa's, and I actually got to watch her make that one, so that was fun. I really liked, she, she put a wash over the top, and she wasn't real happy with it, but I really like how it came out. Um, I think it really made a difference in her background. This one's Teresa's, and it's fun. It's got all kinds of little things on it. This is um, a stamped image, but I'm pretty sure that's like an address label that she's inked and then stamped on. And then there's washi. And this is actually from, it says it's from Pinconning, Michigan, which um, I don't know what she would have gotten to do for 17 cents because it's, you know, admit one and it was 17 cents. This one's from Brittany. Isn't that fun? I like her sloth just laying there. Mm -hmm, I want to do that. And, of course, the bacon is really fun, too. Everything's better with bacon. Okay, let me think. I'm not sure. Oh, this is Esther Thompson's. And, again, there's a lot of um, layering to this one. It shows up pretty well on the screen. I'm pleased that you can see the music paper and stuff. But this is also raised uh, where she's stenciled through. That one's Journeys. Isn't that fun? Um, again, it's uh, got a lot of layers to the background. It says Friends. Um, she posted it, but then she, when she took it to the post office, she must have had to... Uh, they must have not said, said they wouldn't take it because she had to put it in an envelope. Um, she said that she hoped I liked Whimsical because she was tired of stitching. I thought that was kind of fun. Oh, this is like a really fancy Zentangle and I can't remember. I have to read. Oh, this is Barbara Morse. So it's a really fancy Zentangle. Of course, they um, stamped it on the decorative side and not the other side. But um, then she's put this simple little butterfly over the top, which really makes it into a scene and gives it a lot of dimension. And I love the monochromatic butterflies. I I did something similar for something Mary that I did for Mary, and um, I really liked it. This one is Karen Sue Atkins. And I'm not sure how to say her name. I think it's Kara. Ken, Ken, Kenya. Ken, Ken, Kenya. It's K Y N A. Um, she's actually living in Guam. And I don't know that she's been in our live streams much, uh, but she asked if she if we would play um, overseas with her. And uh, I, I know that a couple people have gotten her postcards, so, and I thought they were really pretty. There's a, a lot of um, depth to this one, too. There's a lot of layers under it. This one, Barbara's. Isn't that pretty? It's jelly plated and then it's stamped. I think it's stamped. I have to tell me the other glasses on. Yeah, it's I think it's stamped unless it's a unless it's a tissue that's over the top hard telling. She'd have to tell me. I don't know. This one's Mindy and these images are really cool. That's a it's collaged images. It's different ones that she's put together. And I don't know if Mindy's here. Was this a, a digi of some sort? Stamps on tissue. Okay. 
that's what I wondered if it wasn't stamps on tissue paper because it feels like feels like when you would put tissue paper down. But I thought those were really fun images. And they're she's mixed and matched them and layered them up. This is Julia, and um, she's in the UK. And I just thought this was so cool. I keep pulling it down. I'm sorry. It's got um, the Royal Guard and um, different, you know, Big Ben and the phone booth and, and some tea. I thought those were fun. Okay, this one is, I forgot. It's Dana's, Dana Yates. Um, and it's got some really pretty, uh, I think it might be spray behind the um, mandala that she's drawn, which is, I think, gorgeous. And this is Sher Sherry's. This is Sherry's. And I, I was asking her about these butterflies and this washi tape. Now, that washi tape, I found out, is a Tim Holtz set, but um, it's hard to find. Um, but she actually sent me the set that had that butterfly in it because I liked it so much. Um, it stays on my table so I can use it all the time. But this has just got all kinds of, of layers and stuff on it, which is really cool. And some paints. Okay, forgot who this is. Sorry, I'm not good today. Oh, uh, this is Melody Jones. Mel this is Melody's. And it's all like beachy themed, which is really pretty. And it again is layered up. There's there's multiple layers on here collaged together. Okay, can't remember. Oh, this is Beth's. I should have remembered because I asked Beth about this. Um, this is a rubber stamp Joe found for her somewhere, which I think is a really cool um, little addition to her collage. Um, this is a her a handmade stamp. This is Sharon's, and we're going to blame Sharon for this project because she said she wished she, we could trade postcards, so um, we did, and I think that was a really fun swap. I At least I had fun with it. Okay, whose was this one? I said, oh, this is Kathy Cowles. I didn't even know Kathy um, half the year lives right in the next town over from us two towns she's two towns over but you know i go over there fairly often and um you know you come over here to go to the doctor so um we got together and and had lunch one day and did a little shopping um after she had to go to the dentist so and that is my little book now, um, we did our book landscape this time, and not right away because I just don't have it in me to, to sort out another swap, but when we do another postcard swap, we're going to do them vertically so that we can have a book that turns this way. Um, in the meantime... I hope you guys had fun and I need to run because I need to take Jeff to get his car. So um, I think it turned out great, Mindy. I, I love it. And like I said, this is, it's just kind of because, you know, I, I just had it shoved somewhere. I'll just turn it over on and put it under a little bit of weight and it'll flatten out. All the other postcards do. It's just, this one's got an attitude. If I put it on the shelf in between everything, it'll be done anyways. So, 
Awesome. That'll be great, Barbara, because I'd love to see it. So anyways, guys, I'm going to run. Uh, remember that Thursday is on Lisa's channel at 1.30, not 2 o'clock. And we'll see you all then. And we'll work on our um, cookbooks a little bit more, our journal. So bye-bye. Have a great afternoon. Where's my doodad? There it is.